Welcome to Frankly Coaching, the podcast for change makers, hosted by life and business coach Pooja K. McClymon. If you enjoy listening, I'd be so grateful for your review on Apple Podcasts or rating over on Spotify, because change only happens when we take action. Thank you so much for listening today. Hello, it's season four, episode five. Now, I assume you're listening to the show not because you're looking for celebrity gossip or tips on how to complain more. Chances are that you're listening to this podcast because you see the importance of personal growth, your personal growth. Deep inside, you are passionate about living your best life and you feel that the content that I create may help you do that. Now, a life purpose is the first step to live your most conscious life. Now you can be busy with a million tasks every day, but when you don't have a clear purpose, you might be heading down the wrong path. That's because your goals might have nothing to do with your purpose, which means that you can pursue your current goals for say the next 10, 20 years, only to realize that this isn't actually what you wanted. Stephen Convoy says that if the ladder is not leaning against the right wall, then every step we take just gets us to the wrong place faster. Now, on the other hand, when you have a life purpose, that's when conscious living actually begins. Now, this doesn't mean that all your problems disappear, but at least you know what you want to drive in this world. And when you have a clear purpose, you can then set the right goals and plans and take the right daily steps to create your most meaningful life. In short, If you don't have purpose, you're going to have vague goals or no goals at all, and then you're going to make vague plans or no plans at all, and then you're going to do random daily actions, which include procrastination, or you're going to be constantly busy with other people's agendas. But when you have clear purpose, you have clear goals, you have clear plans, and you have clear daily actions. You want to make sure that your ladder is leaning against the right wall first, then climb up the ladder but make sure you get the big picture right first then you can perfect your goals your plans your actions and this big picture becomes your life purpose i'd love to continue this conversation in my private group over in the telegram app just head to the show notes for the link and whilst you're in the podcast app please rate the show okay let's do this If I could wave a magic wand today, it would be for you to discover your purpose, whether that's your life purpose or purpose for now. Now, life purpose is the starting point of life. Now, whilst I believe that a life's purpose is a great way to steer your choices and actions, I also don't believe that it's always possible to know what your life's purpose is going to be. So for this show, I want you to understand that when I discuss purpose, it's about whatever makes the most sense to you right now where you are in your life. Now, I have a life's purpose, but it's taken me, oh my God, so many years to get to it. And it's also not fixed. So every year I will basically add to it because I'm going to grow and different things become important to me. Now, I'd recommend that you adopt this theory of purpose too. Look at the key areas of your life and decide what your purpose is for each one. So, for example, with your work, your purpose could be, I work because I enjoy the impact my work has and it enables me to live in my lovely house, go on holiday and feed my family. Another example could be for your health. I eat well and exercise because I want to live a long and healthy life so that I can maximize on all life's opportunities and spend loads of time with the people that I love. So the first step in your purpose journey is here. Getting clarity on what's important versus unimportant. Sometimes this is about your values, but in this instance, I want you to consider your purpose, right? Because it helps you when you, essentially when you know your purpose, it's going to help you differentiate between what actually is important and what isn't important. Most of us get so caught up in so many things every day that ultimately don't make a difference in our lives. It could be things like earning more money, 
getting a house, getting a second house, getting a car, getting a second car, getting a fleet of cars. Now, when you have purpose, you can immediately see which goals are important and which aren't versus your long-term life path. And you can basically cut through all the BS and get right to the things that matter. As an example, after I found my purpose, I realized that almost all of the goals that I'd been working towards previously were pointless in the grand scheme of things. So rather than what I thought was important, it's now actually important for me to raise other people's consciousness in helping people grow. Because when I was before I burnt out, before I had my depression, I was in this state of, right, I've got to get my education. I've got to get the house. I've got to get the car. I've got to get the boyfriend. Got to get the house. Got to get the money. Got to get the kid. Got to get... And, you know, all of those things ended up happening, right? Except for getting the marriage and the child. I had the boyfriend because I married the man. I had everything and then I broke down because I was like, oh my God, this is not sustainable. You can't actually live life like this. You know, happiness doesn't arrive. It doesn't, the, the destination never comes. Happiness is constant. Happiness is in the journey. Happiness is in progress. What a way to learn a lesson. Now, my life's purpose in terms of my work is to share this message of consciousness with everyone so that you can also grow. Because if I don't share the learnings of my lessons, what is the point of my existence? What a selfish existence I would live if I didn't share with you what I went through and how I overcame it and how I continue to overcome it every single day. That would be a disservice in my heart. That would be a disservice to humanity. Now, not everybody gets it, right? So I've got friends and family who are just like, what the hell do you do for a living? And it's okay. You're not my target market. You're not the people that I'm speaking to. But you, the listener, are, is the person that I am speaking to. You are the reason I exist to do what I do. You are the reason that I went through my breakdown. You are the reason I burnt out. You are the reason I was depressed. You are also the reason that I got better. You are the reason that I take my well-being so seriously. You are the reason I work hard. You are the reason that I strive to do and share my message for as long as I humanly can. Now, the great thing is that when you invest a few months of your life to discover your purpose, it's going to allow you to work on it right away. Now, I say give it a few months because let's be honest, life's going to happen. Things are going to throw you. Some days you're in a good mood. Some days you're not. If you're a woman, you're hormonal when you're hormonal, right? (laughs) And and that's going to sway things. So give yourself a couple of months to just loosely play around with what you want to be doing. And it was really important for me to take this time to understand my purpose because I didn't want to waste another 20, 30 years of my life pursuing things that I thought I wanted and needed when I could actually start paving the path towards my highest self. Now, I don't want to get too existential here on you, but there are many things in my journey. And actually, you know what? I don't know if I've shared it in a show yet, but There is a part of my journey that I haven't talked about, which is heavily spiritual. And it was based on a horoscope that was written for me when at the point that I had had my breakdown and that horoscope lasts nine years. And that nine years is over today when I'm recording this show, because I was actually going to share a different show for um, this episode, but I decided to talk about purpose instead because little journey I'm going through too. And especially right now where the world is very upside down, I feel like it's a poignant show to share. So this nine year horoscope ends on the 4th of October. And in it, it says that my ambition is to make the human race prosperous with your patience and philosophy. Now, I've been reading that horoscope for nine years and it's never really landed that ambition that ambition, you know, I read it, I was like, oh, that's nice. That's nice. Every year I've read it as that's nice. And I know I've been going through a stage of growth this year. And in this stage of growth, I've realized that my purpose hasn't been strong enough and how I communicate my purpose hasn't been strong enough. And that is really the basis of what I do, why I exist, what my legacy will be. 
And so I realized that I have to communicate better what my purpose is in order to help you more, right? And help you in a more, oh, what's the word? I guess a really deep way, right? Because I really care about this stuff and I really want it to be communicated well. Anyway, let's move on. Let's look at having clarity, okay? When you know why you do something, why it's important to you, you are one more likely to do it, right? So if you enjoy your job, you're more likely to get up in the morning and look forward to your work. You are more likely to do your best and you are more likely to appreciate the hard work that you've put in. But if you don't know why you're doing it, it just becomes something that you hate, you detest, you have negative feelings towards. And the more negative feelings you have, as you know, the more negativity you're going to get. And let's keep it simple, you know, make a list of the things that you enjoy doing, right? And that can be anything, anything that you enjoy doing. And perhaps another list of the things that you want to be doing. And as you look at that list, as you review that list, you'll start to see where purpose really lives for you. You'll start to see what is actually important to you. See, working a 40 hour work week is not important to me. It's not something that I want to do. It is not something that brings me joy. I enjoy being able to have the extra time to do work, especially when I'm in flow, but I don't want to work a 40 hour work week. I always wanted to be a (laughs) part-timer, but a part-timer in the sense that a four hour work day, a six hour work day, a day that I could work, but also I'd be able to maximize time with my child. And I've created that life because that's what's important to me. So if that means I might have to work at eight o'clock in the morning on a Saturday before the day begins, I'm okay with that because I've made that choice to do it. I'm still going to be present for my son for the whole weekend, but at least I know that I can do that. And it's not begrudging. It's because I want to. When you discover your purpose, you can direct your focus to the really important things. So instead of wasting your time on the inconsequential stuff, you'll be focusing on the things that really, really matter. And these are the things that matter to you, not other people, not society, but to you. When you have a life of meaning, when you live a life of meaning, this changes everything. When you pursue your purpose, your life becomes filled with direction and meaning, as opposed to wasting your time in a job that you don't love. You can basically work towards a career that better fits your purpose. But if you don't know what those things are yet, if you don't know the things that give you meaning or fulfill you, it's going to be harder for you to find that job. I know a lot of people, a lot of clients who've come to me about their careers, It's very much in the first instance, I want to change jobs. I don't like my job. I hate my job. I hate where I work. And it's like, is it the job you hate or is it that you don't have purpose in the work that you do? And we'll dig deep and try and identify if it's the actual job, the environment that they work in, is it toxic or is it that the purpose of getting that job has changed now? And because it's changed, you do need to look at a different style of working or place to work. So it's really important not to make a rash decision, especially when it comes to work. We spend so much time there before you actually check in with your purpose. One of my clients, right, she found her life purpose kind of like a transit to her ideal life. Even though she started off in an unideal place, right? So she was working in a job that she didn't like. It was IT security. What we did was we quickly identified what her long-term plan to pursue her purpose was. And then from there, she took a course to build the right skills. She started a Facebook business page. She built her blog. She gained traffic, got her first clients. And then she essentially found her tribe, which really made everything a lot easier because she didn't feel so alone in this shift that she was making within her career. 
And just recently, so this is a side hustle, she put in her resignation so that she could pursue her dream, if you like, full time. Now, in her own words, this is what she said to me. I feel like I was born a fish and for the first time in my life, I've jumped into the ocean to swim with my fish friends. And this is such a massive contrast, right? When I think about when I first met her at the beginning of our sessions, she was so frustrated, so frustrated. And she just wasn't doing what she loved. Every session she'd come like, I hate my job. I hate my job. And to see that change is is so insane. Like, oh my God, you can hear it. Like it fills me up. I'm speechless. But like I mentioned before, it doesn't mean that life becomes like perfect, right? It's not about it being peachy filled with roses. Once you've actually found your purpose, you've still got to put the work in to make things happen. But what happens is, and this is the bit that so many people have come to me for, is that you have found the right direction to set you forward. It's that when people come to me looking for direction in their lives, it's because that sense of purpose doesn't exist. And we go deep to try and discover what this purpose is. And sometimes it's like six months worth of exploration because we're so, we're so used to not asking for what we want. We're so used to not thinking about the things that could bring us joy and happiness that we ignore that part of our brain almost. And it's really hard to visualize. And I, and I hear this from clients all the time. Like they'll try to visualize, I give them a visualization audio and they're like, oh, I can't relax. I can't see things. I don't see things when I do this. And I'm like, just relax, just relax. It's a muscle almost, you know, you've got to practice it because this is something you haven't been doing. You've been on autopilot. You've been unwoke for all this time. Now you're at this point where you're yourself, your true self, your inside self is going, listen, we can't carry on like this. This doesn't make sense. I can't do this meaningless work. I can't be unfulfilled anymore. You've got to fill me up. But you also have to take the time necessary to get there. Don't put pressure on it. Don't put this, oh, I've got to find my life's purpose so that I can live my best life. Yeah, but it doesn't have to happen overnight. It really doesn't. In fact, it shouldn't happen overnight because the whole point of our existence, which I will get to towards the end, the whole point of our existence is liberation from our existence. The other thing with purpose, when you pursue it, you have this constant drive and passion, right? You'll get this incredible burst of energy that essentially keeps you going. So then the ability to pursue my life's purpose, for instance, it fills me up with so much energy and passion that I am excited every day. Don't get me wrong. Sometimes I wake up and I hate the world, but I usually hate the world because I've been stagnating with something or I haven't been outside enough or I haven't done my exercises or I haven't been eating well. It's not because I hate the work that I do or want my existence. It's because I haven't been doing some of the things that matter, that mean that I can be at my best. Foundations of well-being are really key in keeping your light alive when it comes to purpose. So look at the benefits. So a benefit of having that constant drive and passion. I mean, that's pretty big. It's pretty big. When you've also looked at your purpose, what you do is you start to achieve success on your own terms. A lot of people work for and look for success as an end in itself. Once I've made this much money, once I've bought this house, once the kids are 18, once I've done, done this, then I can do this. But I want to highlight that success is an effect of doing what you love and having clear plans, goals, skills versus something you aim for as an end in itself. Now, I know I talk about success a lot in the work that I do, but success is such a subjective word that when I start talking about success with my clients, they start to understand that I'm not talking about a destination. I'm talking about what would make you feel like you have succeeded this year. You know, I've got a retreat coming up in January and one of the key questions will be, how will you know on December 31st that you have succeeded with your plan for the year? 
And it won't necessarily be, oh, because I ticked all these boxes or because I achieved everything on that list, because it may not be, because life's going to happen, because life does happen. And when life happens, we get derailed. We do get derailed with where we're going. I recently had it with my health and fitness goals. I started in March and I was so happy. I found the program that worked for me. I was living my best life. I was losing the weight. I was feeling stronger. I had so much more energy and I was enjoying my clothes more, you know, so many other wonderful things. But I kept what I thought was I kept pulling a muscle in my back. Anyway, I pulled this thing again at the end of, when was it? July, at the end of our holiday. And for six weeks, I have been in pain right? With it. It wasn't getting fixed. So went to the doctor and the doctor said it was a herniated disc. And I was like, oh my God, what does that mean? And, you know, then I went to physio and through physio, they told me that actually it's not a spinal issue. It's muscular. And what we think is, what I'm thinking, the physio, he was wonderful. He said to me, I think what's happened is where you've been doing these hit classes, you've been building muscle, but the muscle composition hasn't been enough to support your back. And I was like, well, I'll take that. Because he basically said that I don't have to stop doing my hit classes. I've just got to do them slightly differently. Great. I can still live. I can still lose weight. But there was a three month gap from me hurting my back so badly to starting my classes again. And during that time, it was really difficult. I felt really depressed. I felt really low. I felt real, real feelings of failure because I had said to myself, this year, I will prioritize my health. My health takes priority. I'd put on some weight, you know, clothes are a little bit tighter. I didn't put it all back on, (laughs) you know, but at the time, that's what it felt like because life comes in and it derails you. It's the things that are out of your control. But my goal was, and listen carefully, my purpose for this year was to prioritize my health. And I can tell you, although it's not the end of the year, I can categorically tell you that this year I prioritized my health because I was mindful of my food choices. I was mindful of the steps I was taking. I was mindful of the exercises that I was doing. I was mindful of looking after my back. I was mindful of my energy levels and I wasn't previous to this year happening. So success is a really important thing to understand as subjective and that it's constant and that it definitely is not a destination. Okay. So in this episode, I've given you lots of, I guess, examples of purpose and how you can cultivate it. And I hope that it's gone a little bit deeper than a previous show I did on purpose. But the key lessons here that I want you to take away is that one, if something seems daunting, right? If it seems really daunting to you to consider your life's purpose, then just focus on defining your purpose for the key things in your life, which are work, health, and relationships. And over time, what you'll be able to do is cultivate purpose for a meaningful life because you'll start to understand it. You know, if you're listening to the show, you're starting to open up your awareness to it. And that leads me to my second point, self-awareness, because self-awareness is always going to be your North Star. You have to actively look to understand who you are, what's important to you, and then be open to changing your mind whenever you have a growth spurt, basically, because you are, you're going to grow, you're going to learn, you're going to try new things. And you are allowed to change your mind as you learn more about yourself. There are no rules here. Everyone makes it up, as my coach says, everything is made up. It's okay. And the third one is to inspire others because we easily get caught up in our own bubbles of life where we can literally only see what's immediately in front of us. And that becomes our entire reality. And it's quite overwhelming. And, you know, to be honest with you, it's really unpurposeful and unfulfilling. But when you can choose to inspire others, what we do is we share our journey, our lessons. We're sharing them with people who may need to hear about it, So it's really important for you to learn to be open with your learnings and then you'll reap the benefits of how it makes you feel as well as being able to reflect, so important here, to reflect on how far you've actually come. We do so much forward focus thinking 
And I know as a coach, I do that. But actually, it's also so important to reflect so that you can truly understand your journey. So let's take a moment to look at where all of this comes from, purpose and life's purpose. In Indian philosophy, the Purushatas are the inherent values of the universe. And you're probably familiar with a couple of them. Artha is the economic values, right? So work. Kama is pleasure. And it's kama, not karma, as in K-A-R-M-A. It's kama, which is pleasure. Dharma which is righteousness, and moksha, which is liberation. Now, the Purushatas are the blueprint for human fulfillment. Working with them is going to help you to create a satisfyingly balanced, meaningful life at the deepest and most holistic level. They offer a way for evaluating your life and making good decisions. Knowing your goals brings meaning to your spiritual practice, your spiritual self. Now, Purushata means, literally means, for the purpose of the self. So you could take a moment now and ask yourself, am I managing my life in a way to support my spiritual growth? Is that even a question that you would ask yourself? What do I really, really want at the level of my soul? Now, the original Vedic text only suggested the three goals of Dharma, Artha and Kama. And in the later Upanishad era, when people began to seek higher consciousness, the fourth goal of Moksha was added. Now, you might be familiar with the term Dharma. Now, Dharma, you might have heard as Dharma, right? So English people or the English way of saying it is Dharma, but it's actually Dharma which has been widely used, widely used by coaches and other spiritual teachers as life's purpose. So they basically say that dharma is life's purpose. But as I mentioned, the four pillars actually work together in order to achieve moksha, which is true liberation. And this is why I get so annoyed with appropriation, because it never tells the whole story. And it is always inappropriately communicated. But that's for another day. So what is dharma in it in itself, right? Dharma means truth, the right way of living, and it's human behaviors, the human behaviors that are necessary for the order of things in the world. Now, on a grander scale, it refers to the cosmic law or rules that created the universe from chaos, which I'm not going to go into today. Let's just stay in dharma because that is where we sort of tend to talk about purpose and life's purpose. So on an individual level, you can think of dharma as your true purpose in life or the ethical basis on which you live your life. It is also being conscious in your actions, words and thoughts. So this is where self-awareness comes into play. Having compassion and sensitivity to the need of others. This is giving of yourself, right? Being awake to the existence of the divine within you. This is the biggest hurdle I find people battle with. You know, if especially if they're religious, they have this version of God, but In Indian philosophy, God is sort of, you know, divine is within you. You have the power. It's all in you. So ultimately, dharma leads you to remember who you really are, who you really are. And this is the space in which I personally do my best work, supporting you to be who you were meant to be in the first place, helping you seek out who yourself, capital S, self really, really is. And what dharma also does is that it it brings stability and order, right? So I've talked to you about how if you have life's purpose, if you have purpose in life, you are clearer in your goals, you're clearer in your action. And when you do that, you have a more harmonious life because you're always striving to do the right thing, the right thing by yourself, the right thing by your goals, the right thing by humanity, you know, being virtuous, being helpful to other people, interacting really well in society because you know yourself really, really well. In the Gita, they say that better your own dharma, though imperfect, than the dharma of another done perfectly, which basically means that it's better that you 
It's actually essential that you find your own truth of who you are, what you want, your purpose, rather than making um, mistakes based on copying other people. Make your own mistakes. Make the learning yours, not on other people. I love this and I'm going to wrap it up here. Vedanta tells us that you will know when you are in dharma, when your actions are spontaneously correct. You automatically know what to do in any situation. You are in harmony with your life and it's supported by everything around you. You feel complete within yourself and life becomes effortless. You now have the opportunity to reflect on what you've just heard. Try asking your heart, what is my purpose? How can I serve? Just silently ask the question and listen to whatever answer arises without evaluation or judgment. So close your eyes, relax and listen to the music. When the music ends, write down the first few thoughts that come to you. Thank you for listening to the Frankly Coaching Podcast with Pooja McClymont. Let's keep the conversation going over in my private group on Telegram. Just hit the link in the show notes to join. And if you love the show, I'd be so grateful if you'd leave a review on Apple Podcasts or a rating over on Spotify, because change only happens when we take action.